So now we've repositioned the patient, uh, moved the angle pillow to his left side, so we're scanning on his right side. Again, to locate a cross-sectional view of the artery, set the probe next to the center line of the artery, next to the thyroid cartilage, and then lay the probe flat. Again, you'll locate one dark pulsating circle, and that is the carotid artery. <clears throat> Again, it's always easiest to start low on the neck and then because you have a lot of brighter echogenic tissue. Slowly start sweeping the probe up, pulling it toward his jaw. And as you're pulling the probe toward the patient's jaw, you'll see the artery start to expand as it is now. And if I keep continuing, it has clearly split into the internal and external carotid. Again, I'm gonna continue sweeping up looking for any lumen obstructing material, lumen encroaching material, until I either lose the artery or run into the patient's jaw. In this case I have, so I'll again slowly sweep back down, back through the bulb, back into the common carotid. And again, you, you will want to capture an image of this cross-sectional view. Okay, from here, you have the option to go back through 60 frames of a video loop and pick a better image if you did identify one. Uh, in this case, the last picture that I've taken is sufficient. So I will now choose the IMT measuring tool toolkit. Okay, again, the three movements. I've located the carotid artery, it is in the center of the screen. The first movement I make is a rotational movement. So I'm not looking at the ultrasound screen, keeping my eye focused on the patient's neck and the probe. I'm gonna rotate the probe more or less 90 degrees so it aligns with, uh, the artery mark aligns with the patient's. In this case, it's already captured an IMT measurement. So I'm going to unfreeze it and now I'm gonna set my angle. So I'm gonna set the angle into the green zone, uh, into the lateral view, and I'm gonna find the artery, again, by translating the probe up towards the patient's throat. If you run into the bone, you've gone too far. So just, again, simply pull it back towards the patient's back until you identify a very dark stripe that jumps across the screen. And this is his carotid artery. So it's taken an image, uh, again, We'll run through our two checks, the first of which is referencing the angle guide on the bottom right of the screen. In this case, it is the correct angle. The second check, however, seeing if the dotted line on the left side of the screen falls into the widest part of the artery or at the flow divider, that fails. So I will unfreeze the image, pull up towards the patient's head, and then now that I have identified the widest part on the right, hold the probe still, and as you can see, it captured one more image. And I'll do that one more time. So again, to simply slide the probe up towards the patient's head. You may lose the artery as I've done here, but again, the move that you have to make is the find the artery movement or this translating movement until you see the artery come into view. And you'll look for the quality index to go from orange as it is now to green. As soon as it's green, wait for three repeatable cardiac cycles and an image will be taken. So now I'll run my two checks again. Is the angle in the correct region? In this case, yes it is. And now is that dotted line in the widest part of the artery? In this case, yes it is.